what I am seeking is within me already. I am my own medicine. And my own transformation from, you know, a state of consistent um, dis-ease to what I consider health um, was so impactful. Welcome to our Soul Fam podcast, where I interview space holders from all over the world. I am your host. My name is Carolina, and I'm the Connection Catalyst. I help spiritual entrepreneurs experience deeper connection with themselves, with others, and with the universe. Today on the show, we have John Downs, a microdosing expert. Welcome to the show, John. How are you doing? I'm so wonderful. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I am super excited to talk to you because I am a big, big fan and advocate for psychedelics in general. And I'm super curious about your perspective. I've been uh, already talking to one of my friends, uh, Walter, about microdosing, but I would really like to compare the perspectives because I know that everyone has a different experience with the substances and everyone probably recommends something else. So I would love to uh, start off with just a little question. How did you get to do what you're doing? How did you become the microdosing and integration coach? Well, I started with becoming my own coach first and foremost and experimenting with these very powerful compounds for my own personal and spiritual development. So it was about five years ago now that I first tried uh, my, um, my, I had my first experience with, uh, with mushrooms, with psilocybin, and uh, I really just began to quickly understand that I was being exposed to different perspectives within me that I had never had that uh, opportunity to really sink my teeth into. And it was such a beautiful uh, opening for me and awakening that I began to um, help my friends and my friends of friends with microdosing and more than just microdosing, sitting in ceremony with psilocybin as well, and also um, other other compounds such as LSD. And people started asking me, what's the change? What's happening with you? And so I started to get very positive affirmations that I was on the right path. And then working with my friends, I started to see their awakenings um, as very powerful um, events in their lives that, um, you know, a singular event uh, could happen in a ceremony, but then the integration process over time is really where the true magic occurs. And so I began just really pro bono, um, helping out folks with their integration of their experiences. And over the last, uh, you know, few, several years, it's led me here. This is amazing. And I'm smiling the whole time just because my path is super similar to yours. Seven years ago, I've, I had my first mushroom experience and I was the first out of all my friends who have uh, who has tried anything like that. And I was introducing all my friends to uh, yeah, psilocybin, LSD, MDMA and all these uh, substances. So I'm just smiling so, so much because, uh, yeah, it's pretty much copy paste uh, the same thing. And uh, I've also seen amazing changes in people's <laughs> lives. Amazing. And even... Uh, uh, last year, I managed to have a ceremony with my mom and my stepfather. And this was also a, quite a breakthrough for me because, you know, for the last mm. uh, seven years, I've been just talking about it and the spirituality and all these things. And finally, I managed to convince them to try as well. And of course, they loved it and they are looking forward to another one. Um, it was funny because my mom already within two hours of the ceremony, she was like, so when is going to be the last, the, the next time? I'm like, mom, finish one ceremony first. And then you can think about the next ceremony, right? Um, yeah, because I, I call it a ceremony because it's always, uh, when I do it, it's always in this spiritual uh, higher way, right? When we set intentions and set up the space and put some music and it's not a... And by the way, a disclaimer to all of you guys who listen, remember to do psychedelics always in the country that it's legal and always with someone who already knows how to do this. Uh, don't do it by yourself and don't do it just, you know, based on someone else's experiences because everyone 
is different and everyone's experience is different as well. And you need to be really careful with what you're doing. So uh, just before we start a deeper conversation about microdosing and all these beautiful substances, just wanted to uh, mention that because you need a trip zitter, okay? <laughs> if you want to do um, not microdosing, but a little bit more, you need a trip zitter. But yeah, I'm super passionate about uh, the topic as well because my first uh, mushroom experience was my biggest spiritual awakening i think where i really felt my soul for the first time and so what was it like for you the, f the very first experience well i want to first underscore the importance of screening and ensuring that before you work with psychedelics you have uh, evaluated your family history for mental illness schizophrenia um, other conditions that might be a disqualifier. Um, psychedelics are not for everybody. And throughout the course of this podcast, and then certainly in my um, practice, I speak very highly of the benefits of psychedelics. But I just want to be clear that, you know, screening uh, is super important, uh, just as important as set and setting. And the other S that doesn't typically get talked about, which is support, after support, support for after the ceremony. Uh, for the integration. And so with that disclaimer out of the way, um, it's interesting. My first experience with psychedelics was in 2015 with ayahuasca, and I was not prepared. I was um, asked to sit in the ceremony. I had not previously really done a lot of um, reading or studying of oh psychedelics, but I had a curiosity. And I had yeah. And so I went right into the deep end of the pool with ayahuasca and had a very impactful, meaningful journey that delivered a very clear message to me. And that message was, I am not the internal criticism and judgment that I hear on a constant stream of chatter in my mind. Uh, the self-talk, the negative self-talk, the criticism, the judgment, that's not me. I'm actually something deeper and beyond that. And so for the first time, I was able to create separation with my stream of consciousness, with my chatter in my mind, and I became aware, but I didn't have any integration uh, help. Mm. Um, you know, I was a regular yogi and certainly practicing mindfulness through yoga, but hadn't yet picked up a meditation practice, did not have anyone experienced to help me through the integration. And so what was a very beautiful experience really faded into distant memory quite quickly. And it was only three years later that I was able to work with psilocybin and did so under the, uh, um, the tutelage of a guide, uh, someone who really helped me integrate what it is that I experienced. And again, what I experienced was unison with the energy of the energy that animates the universe, all I can say is the great spirit, God, um, however you want to label it, the label is not important. What's important is the felt sense that we are part of something much more. And that was a very powerful experience. And it really broke through this illusion of separation um, that had previously existed. And it was a very powerful experience. I've, I've heard it said and Undoubtedly, Carolina, you have as well that, you know, we're not uh, a drop of the ocean, we're the ocean in a drop. And mm -hmm. in a very real felt sense, that became my new reality. Wow, that's so powerful and so beautiful. And uh, so I have a curious question. How would you do it differently if you knew what you know right now after your first ayahuasca experience? <laughs> What would you do to integrate after the, the first experience? Because, you know, a lot of people don't even know what does integration mean? Like, what would you do? Because we know that there's, there are tools, meditation, breath work, there, there's journaling, there's so much you can do, uh, parts work, a lot of things, right? But what would you do differently if you could? Of course, there's no regrets. I don't mean that. Uh, but if you could integrate the first experience, what would you do afterwards? I would have created more time and space to pause and reflect upon the experience. I would have utilized journaling uh, as an opportunity to 
more deeply reflect upon what I had experienced in the psychedelic state. I think back to 2015 when I sat with ayahuasca, it was only January of 2017 that I began my practice of journaling every morning through the morning pages. And that opportunity for reflection every morning is very powerful for me, whether I'm working with psychedelics or just trying to integrate the experiences of the prior day and my feelings. And so those, that's just one practice that's important. Uh, another practice would be mindfulness meditation. Uh, I did not really sit in stillness in a Vipassana or silent meditation until regularly until 2019. Uh, and so, you know, I think about those practices that have been so critical for integrating my psychedelic experience. I had none of that support back in 2015. It was just like, whoa, pretty lights, amazing, you know, felt so, I can't describe it. It was ineffable, but it was, oh, it was awesome. And it just faded to memory because I wasn't embodying uh, those uh, feelings that I had felt briefly in the psychedelic state. So that's where we, you know, also get into other embodiment practices such as breath work, mindfulness, ecstatic dance. Um, there's a whole host of different practices. Just someone, I wish someone would have showed me that they existed so that I could have better understood what I experienced and then translated it from that experience into my day-to-day -day life. Mm. Yeah, I totally relate to that. And uh, when I was starting my journey with psychedelics, I also only knew one person who could tell me anything. And it was good that it, at least it was one person. Um, but then our just our path uh, just went separate ways because we disagreed on, on a few things. But at least I had this one guy that was showing me stuff and explaining because I don't know how it would be for me if I didn't know anything, if I didn't know how to meditate. And uh, yeah, so it's so important to... To integrate and i usually say with psychedelics it's like you are going upstairs uh, on the experience right and you're seeing what's there and you're like oh my god the state is amazing and this is a higher level of of perspective and you see how you can feel and how you can um what what you can mm, think of the world right what perspective you can have and then you go down after the trip and you are maybe like a one step further <laughs> on your journey to get there but you're coming down and you're like okay so what do i do in my everyday life right now so that i can reach this state again right and as you said it could be breath work meditation um healthy food exercising anything that will bring our vibration higher and higher so that we can be in this state and aim for the state to to be in it in everyday life right because the psychedelics are not something to um to use like on a daily basis. <laughs> it's not something that we should get addicted to in any way. It's just something that shows us how we can feel. And then we, when we can integrate it afterwards, then the experience can be the most powerful, as you said. And um, if we can journal, reflect on ourselves and on what we've experienced and really bring it into our consciousness and anchor it within so that it's all understood on a deeper level so thank you so much for sharing and are these uh, mm -hmm. practices for integration that you just mentioned do you also uh, use them with the clients like what do you do uh, usually with your clients as a coach uh, good question i think it's super important to even just make the distinction that the practices that i will speak about that i work through with my clients they're not only valuable after a psychedelic experience. My own experience in therapy, for example, when I began therapy in late 2019, week after week, I was having what I would consider breakthroughs in my perspective and how I was seeing myself and the world around me. Uh, it Maybe not as um, beautiful and exciting uh, visuals as a psychedelic experience, but impactful nonetheless that I would, uh, you know, hang up the the Zoom, I guess, at the time with my therapist and just be like, wow, holy shit, like, I really want to, um, I, I'm, I'm so different now, I see things differently. But then I would get frustrated because I would go into my day to day life and conversations with my girlfriend, and I might still snap at her, or I might still spend mornings um, wrestling with depressive thoughts. I 
was very frustrated between the disconnect between the breakthroughs in therapy and my day-to-day -day life. And it's quite similar with integrating a psychedelic experience. The mm -hmm. practices that you are engaging in every single day are what dictates your experiences. I tell my clients that practices make the master. And so the first principle that I would work with uh, with my clients would be to bring intentionality to areas of their life, in particular, their morning routine, create a ceremony around this beautiful gift that is that you woke up, that you opened your eyes and you have the day before you. And what that looks like for me is upon waking while brushing my teeth, I would take a, a, a marker and write on the mirror three things that I'm grateful for every day. Uh, then I began my mindfulness meditation. Uh, after a 20 minute mindfulness meditation, uh, I would then make my coffee and move right into my creative pages, my, my morning pages, where I just write three pages of um, creative expression writing just to get it all out of my mind. And it's not anything that I want to go back and read. It's not anything that I would show anyone else, uh, but it's important for me to express uh, and develop my my thoughts um, creative, creatively and objectively around what's bouncing around in my mind. Uh, and then from that point, I would move forward with my day. So that morning routine of an hour and a half to two hours each morning seems like a lot. Uh, but I and I would wake up at 5 a.m. in order to make the time before my workday began in order to um, in order to, to, to have that morning routine. But that morning routine changed my life um, because I brought intention to it every single day. Uh, I developed a habit of gratitude. I developed a habit of being able to express myself more freely. So my thoughts and opinions and, and everything wouldn't just stay uh, within me, but rather would be out and get out and get onto the page. Um, and then, of course, I developed the capacity and I'm always practicing and trying to deepen my capacity to be aware, aware of the thoughts that are constantly and forever streaming through my mind. And that awareness, that mindfulness, that we are not our thoughts, that the voice in our mind is a projection of our egos, of, but it's not us, and that we can choose to engage or disengage with any particular thought uh, is so powerful. So those are the, that's the foundational practices. Now, when we move past, you know, the day to day, these are the things that you should do, you know, just like brushing your teeth, um, taking your vitamins, so to speak. Uh, when we move past that to the next level of integration practices, now we start to incorporate based on the client experience, a practice that might be most beneficial for them. Uh, perhaps it's a practice of ecstatic dance. Perhaps it's affirmations. Uh, perhaps it's, you know, journaling with a specific objective in mind. You know, there are a number of different practices, um, both somatic uh, as well as uh, intellectual, that can be extraordinarily powerful for integrating a psychedelic experience. Beautiful. And how do you know what kind of substance to give to someone? Do you have like a specific... Uh idea or, you know, this is what I would give to this kind of person or um, what kind of substance? Yeah. Like, how do you discern what kind of substance you would recommend for someone? You're asking, sorry, you broke up, but you're asking about which substance, which compound? Yeah. Like what, how do you know like what kind of substance LSD, would you, you give someone? Good question. The um, typically we're going to see with psilocybin, um, in the case of a ceremonial context, uh, you know, it's, it's easier to work with the, it's a shorter journey than LSD. Um, it's also a, um, so that, that right there is one of the reasons why we see psilocybin being studied by so many different uh, companies, both private and publicly traded right now. Uh, for all the benefits, it's much more practical to work with than LSD. So when we look at the um, the list of compounds, psychedelic compounds, uh, uh, psilocybin is is 
top of the list for that reason, for its practicality, but also because it, there is a grounding that occurs um, for many people with psilocybin. There is a, um, just as you can sometimes, I mean, forget about psychedelics, if you can sometimes just stand outside in the grass and, you know, feel the grass between your toes and under your feet, you know, you feel really um, a part of this beautiful world. And so often we go through our lives feeling so separate from everything around us. And psilocybin can enhance this feeling of connectivity that we hope intrinsically to feel in our hearts at all times, even without any psychedelic use. Uh, and so that's a good place to start with that, um, you, you know, f for that reason and a number of reasons. Now, when we talk about microdosing, different, um, different considerations to take into effect. Um, when someone is having difficulty with focusing, uh, they have ADHD and um, perhaps feeling anxiety, and we want to ground them. Um, psilocybin is a fantastic compound to work with. When someone is tending to be more depressive in their thoughts as opposed to anxious, when they are looking for creativity and uh, want to create the conditions for my, more divergent thinking, creative thought, and um, then, then LSD would be a very powerful compound to microdose with. Now, it's important to understand that when you're microdosing, right, we're taking a sub-perceptual amount of the compound, whether it's one-fifth to usually one-tenth of, um, excuse me, I said one-fifth, but I meant 5% um, to 10% of a normal uh, therapeutic or recreational dose. So these are very small doses. You should still be able to talk to your parents, talk to your boss, give a presentation, operate heavy machinery, all the things that you can do in your day-to-day -day life, you should still be able to do on a microdose. Many people that say that they have microdosed, but then talk about the, ooh, I felt loopy, or I wasn't you know, myself that day. Well, you weren't truly microdosing. You, you might not have been taking a full ceremonial dose, but you were mini dosing. And so we, it's really important to understand and dial in the amount uh, properly. But um, those are the two main considerations is if somebody really wants to be focused and zero in convergent thinking and tends to be more anxious and we want to ground them, psilocybin would be very impactful. If on the other hand, someone wants energy, they want uh, divergent thinking, creativity, empathy, uh, then, and they tend to be more depressive, uh, then LSD uh, is a compound that can be very effective to really bring them um, to a higher level of energy and engagement with the world around them, as well as engagement with the thoughts and feelings within uh, that, with the right structure, can be quite powerful for personal and spiritual development. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. And of course, I feel like everyone is different anyway, so you cannot really measure everyone with the same ruler. You need to um, really talk to a person and interview them before you recommend any substance, right? Because different substances also work differently on people. And that's, uh, we're generalizing here a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you can always check what works for you. And for me, for example, um, I feel like Mm, psilocybin can be quite creative as well if I just set an intention for the creativity to flow. So it all depends also on how you direct your energy, right? It doesn't necessarily depend only on the substance itself, but also on what you want to get out of the experience and set and settings and your where you, where you direct your energy beforehand. So I feel like you can use uh, yeah various substances for the same purpose. But I agree uh, with you that like generalize general generally speaking and. Um, this, you know, could be shared in these uh, particular ways. And yeah, I feel like psilocybin can also make someone um, go deep into their subconscious in a way that if someone is already depressed, as you said, uh, it can actually be very um, traumatizing for, for them to take psilocybin sometimes, I think. And so surely uh, LSD would be a better choice in here because, yeah, I know that uh, sometimes the mushrooms are taking... Uh, mushrooms are taking us where 
we not, don't necessarily want to go, but where we need to go. And then if someone doesn't have a good, uh, you know, approach to this and good trips it there, it might not result in the best <laughs> scenario ever. So, um, yeah, I, I completely agree uh, with what you said. And so do you use um, microdosing? How, how often do you, how often do you I, use I wanna, microdosing for I yourself? I would say... Uh, well, I would just say to your point that um, you bring up the fact that psilocybin can be good for creativity, right? So what happens when we use these compounds, um, psychedelics, is we typically are slowing activity in our mind, in particular, the part of our mind that is in the, well, the prefrontal cortex, which is uh, the um, housing, the, the default mode network. And the default mode network is the part of our mind that controls how we think about ourselves and the world around us. Um, Self-referential processing and habitual thought flow through the prefrontal cortex through the default mode network. So when we slow that part of our mind down, we are able to have new thoughts and we are able to see our existing thoughts from, you know, perhaps thoughts we've, we've had previously from a different perspective. So that's creativity. You know, creativity is not just new thought, but it's also seeing the same thing from a different perspective. So undoubtedly psilocybin uh, or LSD, all the compounds can aid in creativity. Um, but you're right, the rules of thumb would also dictate that if somebody is you know, having perhaps more challenging thoughts consistently that we would deem to be more um, depressive in nature, you know, then there might be a compound that would be better uh, for them than another. And I always tell my clients as well that from my understanding and from my experience working with a number of different people, your intuition is going to, you're going to have to lean into your intuition because each person is different. Each day is different. Um, these are not uh, compounds that I, from my experience, are so utterly consistent in their effects every single day that we can just bank on the same experience. And that's part of why they are so impactful and effective. I would think of it this way. What we would deem to be the desired effect of microdosing psilocybin can also be the side effect. That's You're going to feel your feelings to a greater extent. You're going to, within, have feelings that you're going to be more intimately and closely connected to and aware of than if you are not microdosing. Now, if those are desirable, desirable feelings, they feel good, all of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, this microdosing is amazing. It's working for me. I love psilocybin. Now, on the other hand, if you are um, microdosing and um, feeling the existence of difficult feelings, now that's a side effect, right? All of a sudden it's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. No, actually you did. You signed up to a greater level of connection uh, to the world around you as well as the world within you. And so I coach my clients when they feel the quote unquote side effects, uh, the undesirable feelings the, of working with uh, one of these compounds, that's where the real work begins. That's where they have to give themselves the opportunity and the permission to feel those feelings. That means that you don't um, just pick up your phone and distract yourself from those feelings. That means that you create space in your day, in your life, to really set with uh, and work through and just feel uh, the feelings that come up because the quote unquote side effects, the undesirable feelings, those days that I've had a difficult microdosing experience can in fact be the most impactful for my personal and spiritual development. It's the same when you are speaking about psychedelics in a ceremonial context or you know, a large dose, not a microdose. But if you're going on a um, what sometimes can turn out to be a, quote, bad trip, well, there's no such thing as a bad trip, only a difficult journey. And sometimes those difficult journeys are the ones that when we get back home, we say, wow, that was, whew, that was hairy. Uh, that, was, that was not easy. But uh, wow, I, I took a lot from that. I got a lot more from that difficult journey than I would have received maybe, you know, dancing through strawberry fields. So that's an important perspective to have, um, to understand the context that sometimes things don't go as we planned with our microdosing or with our ceremonial um, 
experiences, but that's okay uh, because you know life is what happens when you are making other plans. So. Yeah, I vibe with it so much. And even uh, last year I had this uh, Buffo experience that was really like traumatic almost for me. But when I came out of it, I was just like, wow, now I'm stronger because I've gone through such a difficult experience that now I feel more confident. I feel like I can go through a lot. I feel more just centered with myself. And even though the experience itself wasn't pleasant, when you come out of it on, and you're on the other side of it, it's like, oh, it actually made me stronger in some way. And so uh, I totally agree with what you just said. And I even said it in one of the first podcasts I recorded that there is no such thing as bad trip. <laughs> because, you know, every bad trip is like going through a different uh, difficult trauma in your childhood. This is what, this is what I do for work, uh, coming back to childhood traumas. And once you go through it, okay, maybe it was very, very bad to go through this grief or sadness or anger, whatever else. But once you release it from your body, and this is what also can happen on the psychedelic experience, when you release these feelings from your body because you feel them, you are accepting them, you don't have any other choice but to just allow them to happen, then they can be expressed and they can get out of your body rather than be suppressed within you. And for you to just hold on to them and for them to really affecting your life because this is like a filter on reality all these feelings that we have that are stored within our body so i totally agree with you um on this topic mm -hmm. and uh, i would love to ask how often do you microdose with yourself just with yourself or with your clients because that's something that i yeah, I'm really curious as like a coach of microdosing because I don't do it really often. Uh, maybe now I I have some chocolate uh, uh, stored in my in my place, um, just waiting for me to microdose it. But I just don't feel called to doing it. And I feel like for me, it's every maybe half a year I would do a, a little bit of a session, like a month or so, where I microdose. But what what do you recommend and what do you do with your clients? Yeah, good question. There's three primary protocols for microdosing that are quite popular. The first is the Paul Stamets method, which is microdosing psilocybin four days in a row and then taking three days off. And you would repeat that for four to six weeks. After four to six weeks, you would pause and integrate the experience. That pause could look anywhere from two weeks minimum to a month or could be uh, five months. Uh, as you said, um, you know, many people will microdose just periodically once or twice a year, do a, a complete um, four to six week protocol. But um, the second protocol um, would look like one day on, two days off. Now this is the Fadiman method. James Fadiman developed this. So you would microdose on day one, day two and day three, there's no microdose and then you repeat on day four, microdosing again, and just continue that cycle of one day on, two day off, again for four to six weeks, again, integrating afterwards for anywhere from two to four weeks minimum. The third protocol that I see quite commonly is just every other day, um, microdosing psilocybin, you know, um, every other day, quite simple. Um, again, four to six weeks, two to four weeks of uh, integration after the, um, the four to six week period. So that's, those are the three most common. How aggressive, uh, so to speak, does someone want to be in their microdosing? Uh, do they want to be um, integrating microdosing in um, only every you know, third or fourth day or do they wanna be more aggressive? Now, Paul, Paul Stamets, who developed the four day on, three day off, he claims that that protocol is best for what's called epigenetic neurogenesis. That's, you know, the, formation of new neural pathways in our minds uh, and so that we change our minds we think differently you know he believes that four days in a row consecutively then three days to reset your tolerance is the appropriate way to microdose with psilocybin you wouldn't want to do that with lsd lsd you develop a tolerance very very quickly so the most that you would want to take lsd would be um, every you know, third or fourth day. So that's why the Fadiman method, James Fadiman, he developed that back in the 60s uh, with um, one day on, two day off. So those are the protocols. The way that I speak with my clients, and I think this is very important, is to microdose consistently on whatever protocol that you choose. So if you are 
sitting down to do a six week protocol of the Paul Stamets method, for example, four days on three days off, do it every day. Don't miss it. Uh, the days that you're not supposed to microdose don't the days that you are do. And that is going to be most impactful for transformation. If you are only microdosing on days that you feel you can quote handle it, uh, I'll give you an example. I've, you know, I've talked to some, I talked to a woman and, uh, you know, it's like, I, I like to microdose before I go for a walk out in nature. That's great. Um, you may have a very beautiful walk in nature. You may be more appreciative of the birds and the flowers and the scents and the smells and sounds of nature. That's great. But what are you really doing for personal uh, and spiritual growth with uh, that microdosing periodically out in nature? I mean, you're, you're, Ha certainly enhancing your experience, you might deepen some gratitude and appreciation for yourself, your place in the world and the world around you. But when we're talking about going from suboptimal or healing to healthy, and then when we're going from healthy to optimal, I believe that it's important to integrate microdosing into every element of your life so that you are mic on, on days that you're microdosing, you might do something as challenging as give a presentation to 200 people. Uh, you know, as you normally would, or you may be in the midst of, you know, conversation with your boss while you're microdosing, you should be able to do anything that you do in your day-to-day -day life. When you're not microdosing, you should be able to microdose and do that, but hopefully, you know, bring a little bit more awareness, mindfulness, uh, intention to it. And consistently over the period of time, if you're able to do that and then tracking your results, becoming aware through, you know, a, a, a microdosing journal of what it is that you're you're experiencing, you know, in, integrating mindfulness practices, somatic practices such as yoga or just a regular exercise. If you're getting eight hours of sleep a night, I mean that that right there uh, is is super important for um, creating optimal conditions for personal growth. So the practices that you integrate into your microdosing experience, and then the microdosing experience being consistent and disciplined, I believe is much more likely to lead to sustainable transformation than if you are haphazardly microdosing, you know, every fifth day or when you feel like it, or when you want to take a walk in nature, for example. So uh, whatever you choose, and there's no wrong answer, um, ensure that you are disciplined with your microdosing schedule. Mm -hmm. And have you found any changes in terms of um, or any variety when it comes to your clients who chose this or other method? Did you see any similarities with people who chose a specific way of doing it? Or was the result pretty much similar or um, comparable when it comes to all these different ways, all three different ways that you just mentioned? That's a really good question. And what I have seen with my clients is that it's all highly individualized and each person is going to have some variance on uh, their results based on what others are doing. And so we see guidelines, but we don't see hard and fast rules. So some of my clients, you know, benefit from alternating between LSD and psilocybin and integrating both of those medicines into their microdosing practice on alternating days, uh, when, on the days that they microdose. Um, they find that that gives them the best cumulative effects for transformation. Others find that one compound or the other doesn't work for them as well as it might work for someone else. So the important thing is to understand that there is going to be some variation in experience and that we have to um, do a little bit of trial and error uh, and then be open to tapping into our intuition to feel into what's working best for us. Mm -hmm. Perfect. This is really, uh, yeah, what it boils down to, right? When you try and you can do, for example, the first time you can do uh, four days on and then three days off or whatever. And then you can be like, okay, how did it work for me? And how did I integrate it? What, did it change my perspective on the world or not? Or then you can do every other day. And if you, I feel like if you check it on yourself, it's always something you need to check it on yourself because even the energy of each of us is very different. The aura, the uh, how, how intense we are with our energy, whether we are sensitive to uh, other people or not. So 
for everyone it's going to be a different experience. But yeah, it's good that we have uh, at least some kind of guidelines uh, in this world of people who have studied these medicines that we can follow something and see what works for us. So that's amazing. And so what kind of biggest effect did you see in your life or also maybe in some of your clients' lives when it comes to microdosing? What kind of yeah, change that it create for you in your life? Because obviously it did uh, if you're now a microdosing uh, integration coach, right? <laughs> yeah, so I spent almost 40 years chasing external reward, um, you know, really trying to gain more of, of that which is outside of me, more money, uh, more status, um, more feminine attention. And when I began working with the medicine, I also began to intuitively understand the importance of going within and that what I am seeking is within me already. I am my own medicine and my own transformation from, you know, a state of consistent, um, this ease to what I consider health um, was so impactful. That's all I wanted to talk about with my, my own friends and family. And so I've seen, you know, really in my own life, that's the, the net effect of working with these medicines is I think that I, I just was able to transition from a focus very much focused on the material uh, world around us to a more, uh, spiritual path, and um, I'm hardly alone uh, in mentioning that as one of the, um, if not the most impactful benefit of working with psychedelics mindfully, and that is, you know, really deepening our own spirituality and understanding our place uh, in this world. So, other clients. Uh, that I see, you know, one big reason um, for uh, microdosing is mood stabilization. Um, you know, SSRIs, antidepressants, are for some folks, you know, very powerful and effective class of medicines. But for many people, they don't work. They don't work consistently. And I have many clients that are looking for alternatives to SSRIs and want to you know, live a happier life, a more fulfilling life, and don't want to depend upon a, um, a class of pharmaceutical that has negative side effects. And that's, that's number one right there is just mood stabilization and enhancement and creating the conditions for approaching life every single day with a smile. Uh, the other uh, large, uh, the other big reason why I see many clients come to me is for uh, cessation of um, alcohol use and, uh, you know, so addiction issues. Uh, and I have clients that will microdose and consider themselves completely sober. Uh, they don't drink, they don't smoke cannabis, uh, they don't use um, drugs recreationally, but within that framework of sobriety, they will mindfully work with psilocybin. Uh, for helping to curb their addictions. Um, and I think there's clinical trials that are showing tremendous promise uh, with psychedelics as a tool for fighting addiction. So those are the two big reasons why clients uh, come to me. And what I tell them is, you know, microdosing is only the first step. It's a tool, but it's not all of the tools that you need to transform your life. And so if we're building a house, we're gonna need a hammer. A hammer is a very effective and powerful tool for driving nails into wood and ultimately building a home. But you're also gonna need a tape measure. You're gonna need uh, a drill. You're gonna need plumbing, you know, wrench, all the other things uh, to, to build a beautiful home. And so while psychedelics can be, you know, a very important uh, and foundational tool, ultimately mindfulness um, sleep habits, exercise, diet, community, all of those other important things or tools uh, are, are, should not be overlooked um, because the psychedelics are 
Um, and we talk about magic mushrooms, but you know they're not magic in that they work alone in isolation. Uh, it takes a lot of intentionality to sustainably transform. And so I really work with my clients to, to get them to look past and beyond just the tool of microdosing or sitting in ceremony and start to incorporate other practices into their lives that will lead to transformation. Mm, amazing. Thank you for your answer. It was really informative. And so if someone is ready to start their microdosing journey with you, where they can find you? At my website, johnrobertdowns.com. On most social media, from LinkedIn to Instagram and everything else in between, I'm at John Robert Downs. So I'm pretty easy to find online. And uh, but my at my website, anyone can visit and schedule a free 30 minute consultation to discuss microdosing and if it might be right for them. So uh, I hope to hear from some of your audience certainly, and I can be of Amazing. assistance. That's awesome. Thank you so, so much for sharing your wisdom and your beautiful experiences. I really hope that this conversation has inspired some people to try because uh, I feel like it's not yet that common uh, <laughs> to experience psychedelic experiences yet, but I think it's going to be more and more common uh, as we go, as we raise our consciousness and go more and more into the new earth. So thank you so, so much for sharing all of that. Uh, I'm certainly more inspired to do microdosing now after I spoke to you <laughs> i'm probably gonna do it when i'm back home in um, in my country but yeah thank you so much for being with us today and uh, sending you so so much love and gratitude for today's conversation uh, thank you so much carolina i really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and your audience thank you for the work that you're doing uh, i appreciate you and uh, yeah much gratitude Thank you, thank you, thank you, beautiful souls, for being with us today, listening to our chats about psychedelics and microdosing. Remember to be really mindful when you use these kind of substances and do it where it is legal and when you feel safe with the people you trust. It's so important. We are repeating it all over again, I know, um, but it's just really, really crucial if you want to go on this journey to remember about it. And if you'd like to uh, find me as well, I'm The Connection Catalyst on Instagram. And if you need some help, maybe working through some emotions that you've experienced during microdosing or on any other psychedelic experience, you can reach out to me um, or really reach out to John as well. Uh, I'm sure he will be able to help you too. So yeah, thank you so much again and uh, hope to have you listen to us next time.